Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to be doing some upgrades to my truck, starting with a pyrometer. Um, I want to see what the exhaust gas temperatures are when I run an HHO, and I also have a new uh, CPU performance chip. The uh, this is the controller, or actually um, it is a controller, but it will display the exhaust gas temperature. But it's also a PID controller, temperature controller. It can put out, uh, it can control do two different things. One, it can turn an alarm on and off or a simple relay. And then it has a variable output that can be used to control a variety of computer functions. Um, this was about 80 bucks. And then this was another 15 or something. So it's about $100 for that. All right, I'm getting ready to install that pyrometer. First thing is to install the thermocouple and the passenger side exhaust manifold. You can see here it has a eighth inch national pipe thread. That has to be drilled and tapped. Now I'm gonna do that in three steps. I've got an eighth inch, quarter inch, and a 2164th. Now uh, that 2164th is actually a little bit too small for this. According to the directions, I need a size Q numbered drill or a .332. This is uh, like .327, so it's about five thousandths under size. But if I figure the hole's a little bit sloppy, it'll probably work. All right, so I'm going to get underneath the truck and show you where to drill. I'm going to sign off until I'm under the truck. All right, I'm under the truck, behind the rear axle. You see right here is a fuel filter. I don't know if that's not gonna focus, is it? All right, well, there's the exhaust manifold. And uh, you can see where I marked an X. That's pretty much the only place you can get to without taking the thing out, so that's where it's gotta go. I can't drill holding this, so I'll get back with you. All right, this is the setup I used for the tap, the 3 8 12 point socket. The uh, square end of the tap fits in there pretty well. I didn't, I have square sockets uh, which hold square nuts, but I didn't have any that would fit that. So I just put together enough extensions and a small ratchet on the end. And uh, I'll show you underneath. All right, so now that I have the hole drilled. I've got to tap it. That's actually the trickiest part. I've already got that tap started in there. You see I just put multiple extensions on here until I got the right length to get to an easy place to swing the ratchet. Doesn't take a very big ratchet. Uh, what you're going to want to do is get your get it started and if you get it any kind of a bind at all where it feels like it's taking a lot of pressure to turn it, just reverse your ratchet and back it up a half a turn or so until it breaks the the burr of the cut off then you can go forward again. You might have to go forward and back, forward and back a bunch of times. Uh, this seems to be going in pretty easy, so the metal must be, um, well, it's easy to drill, easy to tap. All right, so I'll sign off for now until um, i got to fish out the, the crumbs of metal after I do this. All right, <clears throat> I drilled the holes. They actually drilled surprisingly easy. Now the next step, according to the directions you're supposed to take a magnet and fish around up inside the hole up in the exhaust pipe to uh, get any shreds of metal. Now, I didn't have a magnet that would fit up in there so I made something. Took a piece of steel wire, just coiled it up so it had good contact surface on the magnet, and I bent it so I can stick it up in the hole and fish around. Now, you can see it'll pick up a... oops... <laughs> well maybe it won't pick up a steel magnet, steel uh, washer. Turn it over and see what happens. There we go. So you get to have to make sure you have good contact. So that should pick up any metal that's in there. So I'm going to get under the truck and fish. All right, so I'm under the truck. I'm going to try to do this with one hand. I think you can see that. I'm up in here fishing. Okay, so I did get some metal. So I just have to repeat that process, which I can't clean the metal off with one hand, so I'll have to get back with it. I just have to repeat that process until it's clean. 
All right, I'm getting ready to install the thermocouple. Now you want to be careful of these loose pieces here. I uh, wasn't paying attention. I walked around the other side of the truck to get a wrench and they fell off. I just spent half an hour looking for them in the gravel. So they are just loose on there. All right, well this is the socket for to put the stub in, the stainless steel um, eighth inch pipe thread to hold the pyrometer uh, thermocouple. It takes a 14 millimeter socket. All right, <clears throat> I've got it drilled and tapped, all the metal filings fished out. Uh, I've got it bolted in place and I drilled a hole right here next to the uh, automatic transmission shift cable. I don't know if you can see it, the light's pretty bad down here. Anyway, I drilled a hole right there. <clears throat> it's got a braided stainless steel cover on the wires, so I'll just put a dab of uh, Permatex uh, one step or one minute gasket on there to seal that hole up. Alright, here's where it comes out of the floor. It's right by the throttle. And that's the uh, automatic transmission cable. I'll just snake it over to my control box. All right, so now I have my the PID temperature controller hooked up to my thermocouple uh, for the pyrometer of the uh, to measure the exhaust gas temperature. So I just started the truck, and you can see it's climbing up. Now I just have it temporarily mounted here. The thing was about an eighth of an inch too long to mount in this uh, Radio Shack project box. Um, I have different gauges I want to replace. You know. But anyway, it just wouldn't fit. Now, I haven't decided where to mount it. I'll probably make a new project box. I could mount it right here. There's a little space. Uh, the, the advantage of the PID controller is that I can control things based on the uh, exhaust gas temperature. However, the disadvantage is that it doesn't fit in the standard gauge locations. Like, I can't put it over here on the column. I wanted to put some column gauges in, turbo boost and so forth, trans temperature. would be an ideal place for the pyrometer but that won't fit. I can still at some date get a different around, regular round gauge if I want to. But anyway, there it is. Uh, you'll see more of it when I test my um, performance chip and HHO and all that stuff.